I think we were all pleasantly surprised in the early days of the pandemic at how effectively we transitioned to a work from home uh, environment, a remote environment. Um, we were surprised certainly that things went as smoothly as they did and, and the level of productivity that, that we had. Um, but over time, we, we've seen that deteriorate a little bit. And, and when we unpacked it, we found that early in the pandemic, um, there were lockdowns. So people didn't have other demands on their time. They were sort of happy to invest extra time in work um, because their other avenues of, of utilizing their time were, were, were not available. And we were all a little scared in the early days of the pandemic. And so there, there was a great energy about coming together within our company and other companies to make it work and get it done. And, and we really succeeded there. But over time, people got tired. And as lockdowns ended and people could resume a, a more normal life and get back to seeing friends and um, you know going out and, and doing things there, we're not as happy to spend an extra three hours a day at work, even if they didn't have to, to leave their house. And so over time, you start to see some real fatigue set in. You, you combine that with the fact that it's harder to collaborate effectively when you don't have the advantage of nonverbal signals in person and whiteboards and so forth. And, and we're seeing that, that a lot of companies um, and a lot of our clients are finding it harder and harder to execute ambi ambitious new things. Um, they can still sort of execute the stuff that are well-practiced motions within their companies, um, but trying to do new things and build new muscles is much, much harder in a remote situation, especially with the great uh, migration, if you will, the great resignation where all of a sudden the problems are compounded by high levels of turnover um, and new people you know, coming on and joining the team, replacing old, and now we have to onboard new team members in a totally remote environment. Um, I don't think anybody has really sort of cracked the code on, on how to do this well, and a lot of it comes back to culture um, and whether at the foundation, um, you know, sort of communication and collaboration are, are highly valued elements in a culture. Coming into Media Ocean, it's worked, I think, pretty well for us because those foundation, foundational cultural elements are there. And, and as Scope and Media Ocean and, um, and Flash Talking have come together, there's been a real energy to overcome the barriers and forge the bonds and the working relationships, but it's not easy. And, and we definitely see clients struggling with it. So part of how we're responding as a company to that um, is to make more support available. If clients are struggling with onboarding new people or not having the bandwidth to take on new things, are we as a, as, a, as a vendor and a partner and a supplier have to try to fill that gap? And so we put a lot more energy into formalizing our partnership structures, our service structures, um, and being ready to, to jump in and fill the void where, where clients have gaps. And we found that they've really appreciated that, where, where they've lost team members and have a short-term hole in their team. We've been willing to, to jump in as partners and, and to, try to try to fill those gaps for them and not make it hard for them. Um, and, and so I, I hope that as this pandemic hopefully begins to wane in 2023, um, we forge some new uh, partnerships and, and relationships of trust um, with our clients and we'll be able to carry those, those new motions forward to new customers um, in 2023.